Thank you for buying a Lionel's Bridge. Or many of them. This is going to be a walkthrough of the hardware and software needed. But we'll focus on the hardware side. Firstly, Lionel's Bridge with the cable. I'll probably ship it without the cable attached so it doesn't get bent. And we'll show you how to attach it here. You're looking at basically a silver side and a black side. The silver side is conductive. Doesn't matter which side you use, the cable is identical. Straight through. Just make sure that you have this locking Molex connector open and not locked and you're trying to jam the cable in. So as you can see here on the left, locked versus unlocked. Just open it up, gently slide it straight in and then lock it down and you are worry free and good to go. Just make sure it's straight, not at some weird angle, even though it's pretty forgiving. Each Lionel's bridge has been tested doing this full process of blowing out the memory of the 223E and then restoring it to good health. And I've marked them as good April 2021 with a very fat Sharpie. <laughs> and here's the rest of what you're going to need in addition to the Lionel's bridge. You have the Buchla USB firmware card. Install the current firmware upon it. You can get that from Buchla's site and the instructional videos to how to use it. We also have the Scilabs USB debugger. Um, you're gonna need to order that from them or from Mauser. It's 35 bucks US, somewhere around there, so not too expensive. And of course, on top of the Scilabs debugger, you will have to get yourself a USB cable. And along with that, a machine running Windows operating system. And I looked on the Scilabs site as to what they recommend, which version. I can't find anything, even in the owner's manual. So this is a demo version running on parallels and as you can see activate windows we got a free trial for running for 10 days so literally you can run this for free for the first time for 10 days and uh yeah there you go so keeping your cost down you'll also need to download the flash utility from scilabs and we'll have a link to that i'll also provide links to the code loader fixer also known as code loader loader you've probably read about that on the muff wiggler forum and heard that uh, term bandied about this is what allows the subsequent code loader to be loaded into the module so this needs to be put onto the module first with the lionel's bridge and scilabs debugger and then you install the code loader and there's a specific process we'll get into and show you that but it's nothing really scary it's just clicking the right buttons and takes seconds to do. And then once those two are put in, you're done with the Lionel's bridge and you can install the regular latest module firmware from Buchla USA on the firmware card as you are accustomed to doing. So um, this is not a terrifying thing to do. We're gonna walk right through it. So why don't we go ahead and install the Scilabs flash utility. So here we go, simple process, double click, Click yes, you can answer yes to everything. Install wizard comes up. Yes, we wanna do that. Yes, I will give away my firstborn son to Silicon Laboratories in exchange for this fine flash utility. And I would like a desktop shortcut in order to make my life a touch easier. Finished, there's the shortcut. We no longer have a need of this DLL, although we could use it to uninstall. Uh, that's it. Now, let's go ahead and plug in the USB cable into the debugger, and you will often see this prompt. It is just asking, do you want the USB debug adapter to be seen by the Mac or by Windows 10? And you see the checkbox down here, remember my choice. Doesn't matter. Windows 10, we're good. Let's go. Windows 10 is now accessing the debugger. We'll put that here because the LEDs are kind of useful in demonstrating what's going on just a bit. We don't do hot patching on Buchla systems, of course, so let's power it down, make a little space. Dog's gonna agree. Modular Mongrel's excited. We're gonna take the firmware card. We already have the firmware loaded on it. The M portion for the main section. And uh, we'll just put that to the side. Buchla has great videos as to how to do the firmware install on their cards, so we won't get into that. Let's connect our Scilabs USB debugger 
to the Lionel's Bridge. You take the Lionel's Bridge and you look for that keyed header, the shrouded header there with the key. It's even labeled key on the PCB as if you need that. And on the Scilabs, you have the matching male part. Just align them just like with Eurorack. Hey, voila, you've probably done that a hundred times with your Eurorack rigs, etc. We'll put that there to the side for now. And the 223E is one of several special cases in the Buchla system in that it is two microcontrollers in one module. The main section here on the bottom is what we're going to work with today. There is the flat Molex connector for it. And here at the top left hidden away is the one for the arpeggiator section. We're not going to do that. and um, You'll see why. There's no point. It's just... Just make sure that the Molex connector is open again and not locked, just like with the Lionel's bridge, silver side up. Let's go and work with the main section. And you can see unlocked, it's flapping around there. Make sure it's open, don't force anything. It slides right in easily. And um, I'll show you, yeah, not the black side here, that's the non-conductive side, silver side in, and I, oops, accidentally <laughs> closed it, locked it down by poking it. Just open it up again, don't force anything. Close it down. Fini fatig, looking good. Let's put it back in and do a men in black memory wipe on this module and make it go Christmas tree. And uh, again, I've tested each one of these doing the full process, wiping the memory and reinstalling everything and labeled it with good April 2021 on the back. Guaranteed to work and made with love in Vienna proper. I, uh, I think I can smell shite. Okay, so let's cut the shite and get right to it. We turn it on. Module is still functional or the page button would do nothing. The screen would be blank there. Let's go ahead and launch our Silicon Laboratories. Flash utility. Let me move this stuff around a little bit. And looking at the screen. Launch the flash utility. There it is. And here's just a, a couple of things to keep in mind. This isn't very complicated, but you have to do it correctly. JTAG is the radio button that should always be active and USB debug adapter. And oftentimes you'll launch this and you'll see everything's blank. You won't see the adapter selection numbers. You won't see DLL version. And you hit enumerate USB. It'll go out there to the debugger. It'll also tell you whether your debugger is out of date and the utility will reprogram it and update it. So update equals good. If it asks you for that, just do it. I had to do it on mine. And once you hit enumerate USB, that is basically kind of like the app communicating or the utility communicating to the debugger and connect means communicate all the way through to the module on the other end of the Lionel's bridge. So that is communicate with debugger and connect means communicate with, in our case, the module at the end of the tail. And we can induce the failure just as an experiment to show you what it'll look like. We will disconnect the cable and try to connect to the module. So yes, communication cannot be established. You see the LEDs lit up trying to get out there, but of course, yeah, it's not gonna work because we intentionally disconnected it. We can hot patch this, so let's just do that, lining up the keys again. Don't force anything and just reconnect as normal. Now when we connect, it will be successful. Oh, good, we can see the LEDs. Watch the lower left one run flash here for a second. Success. So easy peasy. It tells you, populates all the data there. What's on the other end? What microcontroller is there? But let's go ahead and blow out the brains of the 223E main section. And keep in mind, again, there are two microprocessors running here. We're only connected to the main section. Much like a 281E and other units, there are... Uh, two different ways of two different buttons to push to look at the firmware so on the lower part it's the remote enable button you would press and hold and would display on the preset manager and on the arpeggiator it's the green clock button but again we're not we're not looking at that at all uh, let's go and turn this guy into a vegetable erase code space do you want to do it oh yeah off it goes memory is cooked Erase has succeeded, walking dead in the house. Make sure you reconnect if you ever do this. Um, you'll fumble around because it disconnects the module. It's blowing it out. There we go. It's repopulated everything. So, yes, again, JTAG, all that stuff, reconnect. And when we power cycle, you'll note that the screen will come up blank. Sometimes you get the Christmas tree, but always a blank screen. Page does nothing. And, uh, of course, the arpeggiator is untouched.
So let's go ahead and bring this back to life by downloading our hex file. The first one we're going to do is the code loader loader, also known as the CL fixer. Can I move this window? Nope. Okay. Didn't think so. Let's put this back here. There it is. CL fixer. That's the one we want for the 223 main brain. Open it. And this is important. It has to be put into this bank number, which is not banked or um, you're not gonna be able to do the next part, which is load the code loader after this. So have not banked, and then just hit download, and this just takes just a few seconds. See how fast it is, writing flash blocks done. So we succeeded in doing that, and we will power cycle just to show this again. You can have no change, it's still a vegetable. And uh, sometimes you get Christmas tree at this point, but not yet. Arpeggiator still happily waiting for action, wanting to make music. Let's let's help it out and get there. We will now put in the code loader, which is main.hex. So this allows the regular Buchla firmware card to work, and it must go in common plus bank three. Um, I read some old documentation that this is protected memory of some sort. So this goes in there, and we can now use the Buchla firmware card. Fantastic, congratulations team, Scilabs, Lionel's Bridge, Studio H, everybody. We now have a module ready to accept the Buchla firmware card and get back to action. We are done with the Scilabs, we are done with the Lionel's Bridge. And upon repowering, same state, because there is no firmware in there. Yeah, page does nothing. And uh, let's go ahead and unplug everything. So we can just pull this off, put this off to the side, and being careful again not to pinch any cables or wires back there, especially between the faceplate and the chassis. We wanna make sure we have the Lionel's bridge open and not in the lock position. So let's open this up, not smash our flat cable, pull that out gingerly. You don't have to relock, it doesn't matter. Back it goes in there again. Don't pinch anything between the faceplate and the chassis. I've helped a few people with that issue. Oh, Merry Christmas. Everybody knows this look. The bricked module deluxe. And for some reason, the LED number 14 is not lit up. But hey, arpeggiator still there wanting to make music. Ah, oh, man. Hey, Google, please debounce this button. It's only been like 10 years. Oh, such a pain during performance amongst other weird issues. The 223, we don't need this. Anyhow, let's address the module um, and bring it back to life. Uh, get rid of this Christmas tree and power it down. And the firmware card can be installed either upside down or front side up or whatever. And you'll see there's three little holes. I might put it there in the back upside down. When you see there's three little holes down here, you can actually see the LED flashing through there if you want to put it in upside down or if you do it accidentally. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll see it from this angle. Um, apparently not. I wasn't thinking in advance about seeing the red LED, but hey, it's plugged in. Again, hold down remote enable, hit the power button. Once the LED is flashing vigorously or quickly, you can just let go and let it do its thing. Now the 223E has a lot of code that needs to be transferred from the, the card up into the brain of the 223, so it takes uh, quite a bit of time. Just watch the LED in the back it's flashing rapidly. Once it slows, um, the module also reboots, comes back to life. So here I can see it, but uh, I don't think it's on camera at all. You can barely see it flashing on my ham very quickly. But there's no real need to monitor it unless, um, once it starts going, that is. I've never seen them start going and then fail. So the slow pulsing means it's done. Then that initializing input port, boom. Hey, success, fantastic. Woo! Congratulations to us. It is now ready to go. Scilabs, Lionel's Bridge, Buchla Firmware Card Heroes of the Day. And um, the module is back to normal. Pageator is always still working. Page button still doing its thing like we saw at the beginning of the video. And if you need to debrick the Pageator section, you're using this Molex connector here on the top left. And the procedure is all the same, but you just need the code loader, loader, code loader, and firmware for the arpeggiator section. Again, links are provided below for that. And now you can debrick your 261E, your 223E, 
whatever ails you and the regular connector will work as well. If you need any help, just ask in the comments below or reach out to me via the email address or the Muff Wiggler forum where good Bukla people have been helping each other out of jams for over a decade. Um, thanks again for buying a Lionel's Bridge and see you on the forum. See you around.